Okay, today we're going to work on some warm-up skills, and uh, this is my friend Barry here, and uh, I'm Buzz Gillis, the old-timer, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy the warm-up skills and learn something from it. Okay, now what I'm doing here before Barry gets here, my hitting partners, I'm practicing uh, shadow hitting. Okay, you'll notice the uh, I'm using a lot of footwork. I'm trying to get in the best position I can to hit the ball. And I'm also trying to uh, work on my, my strokes. And what I'm doing with the strokes is, at the beginning of the stroke, you'll notice something that I want to bring to your attention, and that is a two-handed preparation. I prepare the racket head and get it in position as I turn to hit the ball it, with two hands. The non-hitting hand is the essential thing here. Notice how I'm using the non-hitting hand to place the racket in the position I want, and then uh, I'm using the hitting hand, the gripping hand, to hit the stroke. At the end of the stroke, you'll notice that the, the non-hitting hand is out in front of me for balance, and I uh, have the racket caught uh, by the non-hitting hand and brought back in. So I have the preparation, which is two hands, I have the stroke, uh, which is one-handed, and then I have the recovery, which is back into two hands. So that way, I can be consistent, and I can have control of my racket head and control of my shots, okay? Uh, this is the biggest problem with beginners and intermediates, basically at all levels, is that they are, are hitting the ball and they are playing one-handed tennis, so they can't be consistent. Because the racket is at different levels when they start to use it. Sometimes it's down at their ankles, sometimes they're holding at waist level at all times. Notice on the backhand volley, the cradling, and on the forehand volley, the recovery, okay, with the non-hitting hand. Okay, I'm cradling the racket uh, in the backhand volley and the overhead. I set the racket head with two hands, then I hit it. I set the forehand volley and recover, recover, preparation. Preparation is two-handed. Notice the cradling effect on the backhand volley. Cradling effect on the backhand volley, okay, instead of just pulling it back with one hand. The racket is too large, you know, to play this game with just one hand. You have to control it every bit of the time that you can with two hands until the actual stroke. Now when I add a, uh, uh, a, a warm-up before my hitting partner gets here, I'm just practicing my turn, my two-handed turn, two-handed preparation, and my footwork, and then I'm going to put the ball off and my front foot where my point of contact is going to be right about there off the front foot, and uh, from there uh, I'll get a nice uh, timing and balance from that. And so I'm going to have a preparation, I'm going to have a point of contact, I'm going to have a nice little follow through there. And then when I put it all together, it looks like this. Uh, what I'm trying to do now is hit the ball in a um, rainbow effect or an arc. The success of the key to hitting the forehand is not hitting a horizontal shot, but hitting a, uh, a looping shot, a... Uh, a, uh, a rainbow or creating an arc. And you'll see that better when Barry and I are hitting uh, in just a second. Okay, but I, here I'm demonstrating where I want to hit the forehand off the front foot. Okay, and just again to reiterate, it's all about that two-handed preparation and two-handed recovery that gives me control of my racket head. Now you notice when Barry and I are actually playing a little bit of mini tennis, we're hitting what's called down the line. Notice we're following the same side, and we're working on the concept of consecutive hitting and controlled hitting. Consecutive hitting means we keep a count of how many uh, balls we're hitting in a row. I'd like to hit maybe 50 in a row instead of uh, your average beginner or intermediate player who's hitting two, three, or four, because what we're doing now is we're just hitting the ball in between each other and not hitting for depth. We're using just the little service blocks to do it, and we're trying to aim the ball just to keep it in one stroke at it, uh, while we're practicing that. Then we'll switch to another stroke, and we'll be maybe hitting uh, uh, down the line on the, uh, uh, for the backhand side. And you'll notice how I turn sideways to hit the ball. I still, again, I always have control of the racket with two hands, never with one hand. And um, I'm cradling the racket on the backhand side, the head of the racket then I hit under the ball and I put backspin on the ball. It's the keys to the one-handed stroke, okay? The difference between the one-handed backhand and the uh, one-handed forehand is, the, is the, uh, the trajectory of the ball. On the forehand side, you want to hit the ball in an arc, 
a rainbow effect out of the back end, you want to hit the ball more uh, in a uh, horizontal uh, position. And uh, that's the nature of the backhand stroke. To be effective, you want to hit it more in a horizontal position, okay? Notice how I stay sideways for the entire uh, backhand. I don't get to rotate my hips and shoulders on the backhand like I do on the forehand, okay? Now I'm going to do a few volleys, okay, and uh, Barry's going to hit some forehand volleys to me. And notice between the volleys how my feet are moving. Notice how little uh, follow through and, and backswing I have on the volley. Okay, this will help you an awful lot on your volley when, you're, uh, when you get to play uh, in a match. Okay, very short preparation, very short follow through on the volley.